Truman Lake, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite fisheries. Always, always a fun lake to come to. Lots of fish will be caught. They drop the water, so where we're fishing, got really muddy really fast. There is big fish to be caught, you just gotta find them and get them to bite. With 13 mile an hour winds, boat control is gonna be really important. You never know with the fish scattered like they are. Uh, it's anybody's ball game. Somebody's gonna catch them though, cause uh, you fished against the best crop fishermen in the world right here. Truman Lake is a man-made body of water in west central Missouri that encompasses over 55,000 acres of water surface. The lake is being drawn down, causing crappie to be free roaming and found on flats rather than on structure. With winds expected to be strong today, anglers will need to hit it hard in the morning hours before the front comes in. Keaton and Les Stanstreifer have a history of success on Truman Lake. Their strategy today is simple, to cover a lot of water. Morning kind of started off good for us this morning. Uh, made a run over here thinking that we might catch, you know, a couple fish, um, a little bigger fish. We got here and uh, we end up putting eight in the boat or seven in the boat and by in about 50 minutes we're running about eight pounds and um, we got a good start for the day and looking forward to trying to get on the move and, and catch some bigger fish. If, they're, if they'll keep biting like they are, uh, we'll be in good shape for the day. Got him. Up. Baby. Look how thin these fish are. Got a little bit of back, but no belly. Most of the time we're we're catching these roaming fish out here. Keaton's been a few of them's on trees, but for the most part they're roaming around. We're trying to get this out of the way first thing this morning for the simple fact I think that wind's gonna pick up. It's gonna be a good morning. It's been a good morning. I mean when you got eight pounds in the boat. 50 minutes in, we are excited about that. Jeremy Mattingly and Joey Crist are finding it to be a light bite, especially with short striking black crappie. Right now, we are fishing a railroad track right down through here. It's got everything that a crappie needs to never have to leave. It's got a little hump, so they can get in shallower water with a lot of uh, uh, stick ups and old trees on each side of it. And then there's a, a deep hole out here to the left. So if they want to be in deeper water, they can drop off the edge of the track out here in this deeper hole. And uh, so far this morning, we put four fish in the boat uh, right here. We've been fishing for an hour and 25 minutes, but I saw some absolute giant fish right here and I could not get them to bite. So we're making one last pass through here to see if we may possibly be able to get them to bite and I will end up going to a complete different area here very shortly, and I will come back later in the day to see if these fish have changed their mood because we need those fish. We get those fish in the boat and we'll be in the top 10. We don't, we'll be 50th probably. There's a big field out here today. Uh, there's boats in our other two spots that are in this general vicinity, so we're trying to stay here and be sportsmanlike and give everybody room that they need and deserve. They went there, we went here, so this is the decision we made. So we have to get these uh, fish to bite. We're kind of under the gun on these fish right here. There he is. Josh Jones and Josh Reynolds had very little time to practice on Lake Truman, but they've had no problem finding fish. Crazy. I don't think he's gonna help us, but I gotta check my list one time, see what our small fish is. Nope. It's pretty much matching our small one. Our small one's a backup. We've had a good morning. It's just a lot of, lot of activity, a lot of bites. Uh, we caught eight fish and made a move. Fish weren't the quality we were looking for. Uh, we came over here and called 12 times now, We're looking for 13. Our uh, best fish is a black crappie, a little thick-headed one. You're good, you're free. He's having me working my tail off today. All right. That'll replace our smallest, our backup. Pink is 108. 108. 
holler if you need that. 13 coals. <laughs> national champions, TJ and Alex Palmer. Crappie Masters All-American Tournament Trail is brought to you by American Ethanol, Humminbird, HH Rods and Reels, Genko Fishing, The Bass Tank, and these other fine sponsors. Welcome back to Crappie Masters. Eric and Leanne Howard are tournament regulars and they're finding Lake Trubin more challenging than usual today. Start out this morning uh, near the G3 area, the west part of it. Caught plenty of fish, just no real big ones. Didn't see a whole lot of big ones either, so we went over to the other side of the uh, rail over there, across from Watermelon, here on Truman Lake, and um, what you got? Oh God, yeah, I see it now. That's what that's what helps to have two live scopes on a boat. Leanne's uh, scanning out to the side there. Of course, I was going forward with the trolling motor, and she's able to identify a decent fish. I don't know if it's a crappy or not. Seems like most of these cra crappy that are on the V's here, actually feed real well and they hit them pretty good. You know, the afternoon bite's really good on the wood, so we'll see what happens this afternoon. This morning bite's been kinda weird. I mean, the fish are on the woods. Some areas, some some areas are not, they're still out roaming. You know, we're fishing in anywhere from probably eight feet to 13 feet of water. Look like the lake's starting to have a thermocline in here a little bit in some areas. All right, Mother Nature. The areas we've been in, they've been kind of half and half this morning on the wood and just roaming still. Matthew and Bruce Rogers have won multiple tournaments, but are less confident that today's their day. Wind is kind of killing me here the way I want to fish. I'm wanting to fish, you know, the stumps back and forth through the whole, the whole stretch, and I'm having to stay up on this upper edge. Just the way it works whenever you're trying to work into the wind. But it's not easy right now, by any means. I lost a, a couple really good fish here in this spot. Just couldn't keep them on a hook. They just weren't biting very hard. I absolutely love the fish. I mean, I wish this was a bigger one, but it'll help. These, these fish in this area are fatter for some reason. I don't know if it's because the wind gets blown in here a lot and there's been a lot of shad getting blown in it and uh, that's what they're, you know, they're foraging on. I've been done spawning for a while. And it's honestly been a really, really tough bite. A lot of these fish are right down against the bottom. That one there was on the very bottom base of a tree and I just happened to see a, a shimmer and drop down there and caught it. That's why I've caught a lot of low crappie today too is just because uh, the pattern I'm fishing, you know, is on wood, and whenever they get really tied to wood, sometimes you can't tell the size of them. You can just tell that there's maybe something there. And uh, I mean, I've caught a lot of nine inch crappie doing that, but I've also caught two pound, two and a half pound crappie doing that. So uh, we, we don't have a weight try to even be in the top 10 right now. There's still quite a bit of time though. You know, two pound and a halfers would, would probably get us maybe top 12 maybe. As we checked in with other teams like Frierson and Patterson, we saw the windy conditions increase, but it didn't seem to stop teams like Larry and Dalton Gorham from catching fish. The question is, would they be big enough to stand up to a large field of 90 boats? And would anglers like Heideshack and McClure have a big enough bag to put them in a good position for day two? Even Mike Valentine and Jesse Shoemake were victims of a light bite. But 
quickly redeem themselves to put another keeper in the boat. Day one has been rough, but time is up and it's time to see who took the top spots on day one, giving them their best shot on Championship Saturday. Your top five includes Jordan Prepst and Jeremy Campbell with 11.15 pounds in fifth place. In fourth, Matt Wareham and Wylan Shanks with 11.36. The third place slot is taken by Hunter Bowling and Darren Lankford with 11.42. Only two one-hundredths of a pound separate them from the second-place team of George Meyer and Owen Williams with 11.44. It's, it's tough. It's, it's going to be a struggle tomorrow to do what we did again today, but we're going to have to try to try to tough it out. And in first place on day one, it's Mike Valentine and Jesse Shoemake crossing the 12-pound barrier with 12.07 pounds. We're sitting in good shape. Um, just got to be in the right place at the right time for the right couple hours, and it should be, go be all good. Here's how the rest of the field placed on day one. Less than a pound separate the top seven finishers on day one, so none of the teams can afford to take it easy on day two. Championship Saturday is just ahead on the Cropping Masters American Tournament Trail. Cropping Masters All-American Tournament Trail is brought to you by the National Corn Growers Association, Minn Kota, Power Pole, Millennium Marine, Ozark Rods, and these other fine sponsors. Welcome back to the Crappie Masters All-American Trail. After day one, the top seven places on the leaderboard are separated by less than one pound. The top 10 is full of good guys, but I mean, the top 30 have a chance to win it today. I mean, it's anybody's game still. The wind helped us yesterday yeah, in one area. Yeah, it did. Uh, I think the bite should pick up. I don't, it's been, Truman Lake's been rough for the last few months, really, and I think that it, uh, the bike's just gonna get better as the sun keeps shining. The guy at the top right now, he's been on a roll this year. He's really won a lot of tournaments and fished very well, and there's some guys at the bottom of the top 10 that's won multiple tournaments this year and last year, so it's a tough group top to bottom. Mike Valentine, he's a stick here, you know, he's, he's local and, you know, uh, Waylon and, I mean, obviously Josh Jones and Rogers, they can creep up on you real fast. I mean, they might be sitting, you know, under top 10, but I mean, they're, they're gonna make, a, make headway today, I promise. Every one of these teams is capable of winning this tournament before we even started, so we were just fortunate enough to catch a really big fish on day one. It's championship Saturday, so let's hit the water. We kicked the day off with the day one leaders, Mike Valentine and Jesse Schumick. They're just over a half pound ahead of second place, hoping for another big bag on day two. We caught up with them during the live well checks before dawn to ask about their strategy on day two. Yeah, our plan today is, uh, is really to stick to one main area. We've got a couple, two or three other places to run to, to try to hit one here, one there. Uh, we're hoping that we don't have to do that. So, but uh, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. It's fishing, so you gotta, you gotta adjust when things are not going how you think they should. The smaller, more aggressive fish were the first to bite. Not the size, not the size. But they were in a hot spot and it didn't take long to start putting catches in the boat. Let the party begin. Second place team Meyer and Williams start their day with a nice keeper on the first catch. Their second catch is a keeper as well, and Owen Williams reveals something about their early morning bite. We're only fishing about six and a half foot of water right now. These fish are shallow. The third place team, Bowling and Langford, notice a different behavior as well. Fish are on the trees a little bit more already. The sun come up and they just right up there. 
Um, yesterday they were more scattered out off the trees. So I think a lot of boat pressure. We're uh, this morning when we got to our first spot, which our main spot's up there where that boat's at, probably uh, there was seven boats right here. It was pretty full. Then pretty well everybody left. That area really filled up with carp and and uh, gar. So I think it'll it'll struggle a little bit. A lot of fish turning away from it. But my partner's running a a minnow rig, just a straight old minnow rig with a gold hook. And I'm running a jig tipped with a minnow. But a lot of times they'll follow that minnow rig all the way to the top if they won't eat it. And then I'll drop in there after they've went back down. A lot of times they'll go ahead and eat the jig. Pretty well, we're gonna have to upgrade five right now. If we can get five of them upgraded, be nice to catch a kicker. But uh, that don't happen all the time either. But if we can get up there in that 160, 170, then we'll, we'll feel a little better about it. Welcome back to the Crappie Masters All-American Trail. Josh Jones and Josh Reynolds are currently in 15th place after what turned out to be a very difficult day one. We're doing better than we were yesterday. So we're feeling good and we just hooked what I think was a fish over two pounds. I'm almost certain it was. I had it hooked and it got me twisted in a tree. And uh, we tried to get it out. It was on there a while, a couple minutes at least. And then we tried netting it. I think I knocked it off. It was about, it was about five feet under the surface. So that would have really helped us. I mean, there's a ton of fish out here, so we'll have more chances, but you can't blow opportunities like that and win tournaments for sure. These fish really haven't been been biting that well. If we would have had minnows yesterday, we would have done a lot better, but the bait shop was sold out, and we really didn't think too much into it. And we was really, we were really hoping that we had minnows yesterday, but we didn't. Although, a couple teams let us borrow or let us have probably 10, so that, that actually helped us. We, we asked a couple guys if they had some minnows, which they didn't have many, but it helped us catch some key fish yesterday. Mark and Aaron Engelhardt are currently in sixth place and struggling. They've been fishing for nearly an hour, and this is their first fish. Great job. Great job. Fun. We've struggled all day just to catch what we have. It's just been a grind. Yeah, we had more than first 30 minutes yesterday morning than we've had all day so far. So, I don't know if it's fishing pressure or what. Here it comes. You got it. Net. Seen a lot of fish, a lot of good fish, a lot of pound and a half to pound and three quarter. And they just, just sit there and look at you. We got three good fish, we need four more to have a chance to even be in the running for second or first or second, that's for sure. So hopefully it picks up for us. Just gonna keep fishing and see what happens, all we can do. The team of Kevin Pitts and Travis Wace are covering a ton of water and averaging a fish every seven or eight minutes but they're not finding anything worth keeping. Meanwhile, John and Mike Gelati have another spot to move to, but they're finding it tough to give up on the honey hole they're currently fishing. The fifth place team of Prepst and Campbell have seen a hotter afternoon bite and they're still culling out the smaller fish and looking for kickers to move them up the leaderboard. I'm getting all dizzy. With plenty of time left to fish, tournament leaders Mike Valentine and Jesse Shoemake suddenly have a problem as Mike begins to feel ill and makes the decision to sit the rest of the day out. You're gonna have to come up here. Jesse Shoemake fished a little, but then the decision was made to stop early so Mike could get off the water. 
Day two was rough with blazing temperatures and only light winds for relief. So the anglers were ready to get out of the sun and weigh in. The top five on championship Saturday were Matt Wareham and Waylon Shanks, down one place with a two day weight of 21.88. In fourth, up from 22nd place on day one, Richard Bowling and Gary Lee with 21.91. In third, up from eighth on day one, Jeffrey Larch and Jarek Fjok with 11.42. 12.07 was the day one wait for Mike Valentine and Jesse Shoemake. They need 10.98 to win the championship. 10.98. Here we go. 10.98. Take a look. Oh, 10.33. 2240. Second place goes to day one leaders Mike Valentine and Jesse Shoemake with a two day bag of 22.4 pounds. Uh, we had a decent day. We had a, we had a slow start. We had a few issues, had to come in, and uh, but we'll, we'll take second place. And shooting up from seventh place to win championship Saturday, John and Mike Gelati with a come from behind 23.04 pound sack. Oh, it feels good. It's been a it's been a long time coming for us. You know, this is our home lake and against these teams and these guys we've got to know over the years fishing, uh, the wind feels really good. Here's how the rest of the field weighed in on Championship Saturday. Come back next week as we travel back to Lake Darbonne in Farmerville, Louisiana, where we'll see anglers face off on our Crappie Masters 2021 National Tournament. This is the one our teams have worked hard to qualify for. So don't miss a moment on the Crappie Masters All-American Tournament Trail.